The Green Bay Packers just linked to a big time trade. How credible is it? Would you even want it as a Packer fan? Do the Packers want it? We're going to cover all of that in this video. Also, what did Jordan Love have to say about his wide receivers? And do we agree with it or not? I'm going to cover that. So please, before I do hit that subscribe button, let's get into it. As you know, Justin Jefferson reached a monster deal with the Minnesota Vikings, making him the highest paid wide receiver out there, which then leads to another guy who needs to come to a contractual agreement with his team. And that is the guy who's linked to the Packers. We start talking about trade rumors out there and all of that stuff. And of course, when you start mentioning CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, you know, I think, you know, Justin Jefferson is just a nudge better than CeeDee Lamb. Um, but you can make an argument for both those guys. So either way, it's a one, two best guys in the league. So until they can reach a number, and I'm sure they're looking at Justin Jefferson's contract to do that until they contractually come to terms with CD lamb, there's going to be a whole lot of rumors out there for man. If, if we don't reach an agreement with CD lamb, then what do we need to get? What is his value? Um, who's willing to give up what all of those type of scenarios out there. So what did this article have to say? It says right here, the Cowboys take a catastrophic loss in CD lambs trade proposal. Now the Packers being one of those teams mentioned on their bleacher report is the one who came out with these, you know, idealistic type of scenarios and situations for the Cowboys. If they are unable to come to terms with the CD lamb contract, but uh, I, I, when I see catastrophic loss and what the Packers would be giving up, I certainly do not think that that would be a catastrophic loss for the Dallas Cowboys. But here's what the Packers, they're saying, would have to give up. They're saying either Christian Watson or Romeo Dobbs, along with Jaden Reed and a 2025 second round pick. How is that catastrophic if you were the Dallas Cowboys? I don't see that at all because, again, you're going to have to throw a big, large number at C.D. Lamb. So you're going to tie up a lot of your asset, a lot of your draft, your, your capital into C.D. Lamb. So getting a young getting a young wide receiver who was proven one of the best rookies in the league last year overall in the draft class is Jaden Reed. This is a guy that has a ceiling that is so high. Um, he could be that number one wide receiver um, out there and he may, may take that leap for the Packers this season. Wouldn't shock me or surprise me if we see a huge leap by Jaden Reed. And then you're giving up a guy like Christian Watson, who the ceiling is crazy high. If he can figure out his injuries and all of that, along with a second round pick. I don't see how that is catastrophic if you're the Dallas Cowboys. But again, this is quote unquote America's team in the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones and all that. They are certainly not going to be letting a guy like CeeDee Lamb go when we start talking about the best or second best wide receiver in the league. They are not going to let that depart. They're not in the business of rebuilding. Jerry Jones isn't getting any younger. He certainly wants to see them get a championship in his lifetime. So, that being said, CD Lamb is going to give you the best opportunity to do so. This is all garbage and, tr you know, I, I don't think this is credible whatsoever, but let's read what this says. It says the most reasonable suggestion made by Bleacher Report um, uh, for Dallas perspective would have been, uh, would be their trade with the Packers. Again, it, there's a lot of teams out there, a lot of scenarios. This was the most realistic one on there. It involved Romeo Dobbs or Christian Watson, along with Jaden Reed in the second round pick to the Cowboys for Lamb. The thing is, that trade, that kind of trade idea seems to completely whiff on the value of those players for the Packers bringing to the table, like Dobbs and Watson, who have are good when healthy, and Jaden Reed um, was one of the best rookies in the NFL. Um, and they gave that a grade of a D. Here's the thing. I don't want the Packers to trade uh, for C.D. Lamb. However, when all of these rumors started happening, there was a Packer guy that sent out an article that said, this is sure to get Brian Gutekunst fired if he pulls the trigger on a trade like this. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Bringing a guy like C.D. Lamb to go to compliment Jordan Love one of the best wide receivers in the league, one or two, and then you got you pairing him with uh, with uh, Jordan Love, and you get to retain either Watson or Dobbs and Wicks. Like I don't think that gets you fired. I thought that was an absolutely stupid article and a stupid position to take. Um, 
you know, Brian Gutekunst is fine. Brian Gutekunst isn't going to be pulling the trigger on this deal. I think this is all garbage. This is, again, just until they can contractually come to terms or an agreement. So that is my take on all of that. So what did Jordan Love have to say about his wide receivers? Um, in this article, um, you know, he was interviewed and he had um, this to say. He says, I think you don't have to have a number one wide receiver, Love told reporters. I think it works out well when you could spread the ball out and you've got different guys making different plays and you can just put them in different areas. I think it puts a lot more stress on the defense and the calls that you can get in. So I think in the long run, and it helps us out not having that number one guy, a true number one guy, but I think those guys can step up, meaning his wide receiver room can step up and be the number one guy on any given day. Of course, we saw that with the Packers um, last season, you know, just different guys stepping up at different times, whether it was Christian Watson for, for a hot second when he was healthy, you got De Dontavian Wicks, which seemed to be that favorite target. Jaden Reed was probably the most consistent from start to finish. Of course, it helped that he stayed healthy most of the season. And then you had Romeo Dobbs coming on, especially as of late, um, just creating so much separation. Again, Dontavian Wicks is one of those guys that can create so much separation. And then you've got your tight end room of Luke Musgrave and T Tucker Craft. So do you agree with his statement that they that they don't have a number one guy and that that is a good thing? Chris Sims seemed to think otherwise. Chris Sims was just like saying, now nah, I don't agree with that because you want defensive coordinators to uh, lose sleep just planning around that number one guy, like a CD lamb type of player. Um, there is some truth to that, but I think overwhelming, overarchingly, I think that Jordan Love is spot on and saying that I think not having that number one guy, it does put a lot of stress on the defenses because it's just like, man, if we're in this type of situation, who do we plan for? Because, you know, uh, um, you know, in different scenarios, you have to account for, four different guys right, as opposed to one different guy, right? So I think, again, as Jordan Love said too, one of these guys can step up as the number one guy as we saw last season on any given Sunday, Thursday, Monday, whatever you name it, Sunday night, any of those guys can. And then you've got a guy like Bo Melton that has just completely skyrocketed his stock value in Green Bay, showing up to OTAs, looking as good as he has, um, I think the Green Bay Packers um, are in a fantastic situation. I love what Jordan Love had to say. I really do. I think not having that quote unquote number one guy in Green Bay, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs seem to be getting it done without their quote unquote number one guy. Obviously, Tyreek Hill was that guy. He got traded um, or signed by the Dolphins. And then, you know, it just been, it's been a couple of years of like, it just, who's the number one guy with Kansas city. It really doesn't matter um, because, well, you can make the argument for Travis Kelsey at tight end, but in a wide receiving room, you don't necessarily need that. You got a play caller like Andy, Andy Reed. And then you've got Patrick Mahomes, not saying Jordan love is Patrick Mahomes, but Jordan love certainly was the best quarterback. The latter half of the season last year than any quarterback out there. Um, and then you've got a play caller like Matt LaFleur here in Green Bay that that is problematic for almost any team out there. And I think Green Bay is going to go out there and prove that. Leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts. I would not want a guy like CeeDee Lamb personally, but I wouldn't mind if they got a guy like that. Uh, I just don't see this is a complete garbage. I don't see anything like that happening. Go Pack Go.